back from our annual Nambla meeting to bring you this review for Hack and Slash. This is from Double Fine Productions. It uses a custom engine, and you can find that at hackandslashthegame.com. That's N as in... Well, let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> you can pick this up... For, you can pick this up for $20, but until the 16th of September, you can get it for 33.3333333333% off. It's a leap At $13.99. Wet, stinky euro, moon dollar cash things. And what is it? Hack and Slash is a puzzle action game about hacking. Reprogram object properties, hijack global variables, hack creature behavior, and even rewrite the game as cold. <laughs> That, that, that was a burp. The only way to win is to not play by the rules. So, of course, with every game that crosses our path, we give it the chairquisition. Uh, one chair means that it's shit. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means it's pretty good. And four chairs means that it's pretty fucking tits. And, of course, we have our categories. Oh, doom, mix with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So, uh, we should br- we should bring this up that they did Double Fine did give us keys for this way 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 long time ago in eons past in the future. So now that that's out of the way, then did the game make with the working? How does it make with the working? Well, the first thing you always want to think. This is a Double Fine game. First started showing the love way back when we've since had the cave. We've had the um, heavy metal. What's it called? Br- brutal Legends. Yeah, the brutal quest. With the stack uh, Psychonauts, they've, they've actually, I think they've yeah. basically backported their entire library yeah. over to Linux. Psychonauts yep. was made by G Money, however, um, mm-hmm. or ported anyway, but this is double fine. You know what you're going to get, and that's a whole lot of makes with the working, period. And we tested this on over here in Vinland on our Octo Core Dual 770 running Ubuntu 1404 LTS, 64 bits of, hey, check this out. I'm going to give it the four chairs. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't have any issues. Actually, that's not true. I did have some issues while playing the game. Uh, I got two spike crashes. Mm. Um, but that's, those seem to be isolated incidents, and there was other... It looked like there was other shit going on. I never really investigated it much further than that. But for the most part, um, yeah, four chairs. Four chairs? On what? On this set, uh, 670 Super Clock, 1090T, AMD, um, Fedora 20 powered, 64 bit. Uh, do you actually machine. have like a sticky note uh, with that written on it? Because every time I ask you that, you'll have to look down at it. I'm, not looking, <laughs> I'm, lo- I'm looking down at it because I'm trying to recall what the hell I crammed in there once upon a time. <laughs> well, th- this is like a four year old box now, actually. Um, but, anyways, yeah, four chairs. Pedro. Yeah. So over here on the calculator, which is running still a 370M i3 processor and a an AMD 5650HD mobility Radeon with the open source drivers on Shubuntu 1204 LTS, uh, 1204, no, 1404, 64-bit LTS. And 1504, 1704, 1904, 14 so <laughs> But yeah, it worked. Didn't really get any of the spite crashes. So four chairs. Sweet. So that's four chairs for mix with the working. Up next is Shiny and Sounds, Ben. Shiny and Sounds. Um, we get a look at what this game is. It is. Uh, kind of, uh, am I wrong? Maybe you guys give me a little audio feedback here. It, Zelda-ish. Yes, it, yeah. it, it, cert- it certainly takes its inspiration from Zelda, and it sort of plays around with that formula. It's got its clean bits, but it also gets a little pixely, sometimes intentionally. Not enough to where I would say hipster pixel, but uh, some pixely points. Our choice. Um, I, I can dig it. I mean, it it's definitely has its own... Well, it doesn't. It has the Double Fine style. Yep. Uh, you, you could have showed me this billions of years ago, and it's like, oh, who made I was like, that's a Double Fine game. Because it is very much... The sounds, I didn't mind them. I mean, I actually was listening to it and all that, and it got stuck in my head. Especially because there was this one point where I was trying to watch like the one walkthrough for this damn game because I was stuck <laughs> somewhere. And I was like, what do I do here? And I don't like cheating. I just like getting just enough of an idea and like right to that point to be like, all right, 
pause it. I don't want to know exactly how, but I got the idea now. But I was still listening to that, and I was kind of jamming along with it. I mean, it's, um, you know, chiptune trash, but it's good yep. chiptune trash. I'll give it that. Uh, nothing to write home about. Not very demanding on the system. This box doesn't even warm up when it's being played. So, um, fine. Three cheers. I'll give it that. It deserves it. Very solid in the graphics for what it's trying to be. Very solid for actually making chiptune hipster trash listenable. Good on you, Lot. Yeah, really, really every, every, all, all the choices, at least aesthetically, for audio and visual components of this game come down to it's an artistic choice. Um, they're, the guys at Double Fine are trying to create this world. They're trying to give it a very distinct feel of it's almost sort of like a computer program, but not quite. There are random USB ports everywhere. Uh, I, I'm looking for when like someone actually pulls out the FireWire port or the FireWire cord, and he's like, my God, what is this alien technology? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like uh, like Ben said, the, the soundtrack is fairly good. The 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 visuals themselves like um for for what the game is trying to accomplish i think it's it set it accomplishes what it sets out to do uh that 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 advertisement is really really distracting me jeez that is <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm seeing it out of the corner of my life I'm like what the fuck is going on um but yeah the, uh, for for what this game is it lo it looks fine um it basically accomplishes all goals it sets out to do. It's not mind blowing. You're not gonna have your eye pussies and ear pussies rocked, but I would say for what the game is, it's acceptable. So three chairs, pretty good. Yeah. Well, the one thing I actually found jarring when it came to the uh, graphics, the shinies themselves, is that uh, the walking animation while going diagonally. Is missing. Uh, <laughs> what this means is your character, if you push up and right, say, it will sort of moonwalk its way up the screen. And it's a bit jarring. But it may just be me being nitpicky, but uh, it's quite literally the only graphical issue I could safely say was not part of the experience because they do like to shove in random glitches into the graphics to you know give it the whole hacking theme to it and yeah uh, one thing i forgot to mention in the uh makes with the working i actually tried to play this on my netbook and that thing has a single core one point to AMD C30 APU, and it runs stupidly well. I mean, there are no options for the game. There are no graphical options. There's nothing. It runs stupidly well. So for shiny and sounds, I'll give it a three chairs because the walking animation thing was, like I said, jarring. <laughs> Actually, Pedro, you're lying. It does have a video option. You can choose whether it's full screen or not. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, coming, so that's that's three chairs for shiny and sounds. Up next is controls. Ven, I hear you have a problem finding the select button. Well, yes. you, you, you got to search for them somewhere. Um, no, it's uh, it wasn't mapped. Uh, it didn't start select. I pressed everything. You know, that's the first thing you do when you, you reach over and you was like, oh look, controller support. Neat. Let's see if this works. So, you pick up your controller organ, you mash all your buttons, and you see it's like, oh, this does this, 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 this maps. Inventory, completely forgot about that, because I didn't start playing until this week. And I got to the point where it had auto-mapped, like, two magical moon hats to, uh, I couldn't use my USB sword. And I was like, right, we gotta fix this. Escape, went to keyboard, and I was like, oh, inventory, can I map that to a button on the controller organ? I was like, nope! And I was like, so it's I. And I was like, oh, I, all right. Partial controller support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, did that, sort of that. Everything was brilliant after that point. I was like, hey, boomerang, didn't know I had that. Um, outside of that, little glitch. This is a great little sit-back experience. Once you know that, you might want to, you know, if it works perfectly with, you know, your Xbox, your PS2s and all that, you're going to have no issues over here. I mean, just keep an, you know, open up the inventory. Not a big deal, but that, 
is kind of a big enough deal to not give it a four chairs on the perfect with the controls. So uh, I'm going to give it a three chairs. So, um, Ben, you silly bitch. Um, <laughs> that was a loud noise coming from outside this room. I'm sure <laughs> I'm going to die briefly, but that's beside the point. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, they're, they're... Yes, I'm... ratings. Breach clear, breach clear. <laughs> no, uh, a? The, no, I, 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 I had no issues with the controls. They, they basically work perfectly well. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the inventory button was mapped to the select button on this Xbox controller guy. So the, the, I, this, this is, this is more of a nitpick than anything. It, it's actually a limitation of, the Xbox controller here. The D-pad sucks because if you're playing with a controller, you have to adjust values. You have to basically one at a time. And if you're if you're if your thumb shifts on on the shitty D-pad on the Xbox mm. controller, <laughs> your 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 entire thing your 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 cursor is just going to shift to the next item, and then you're, it's going to be modifying that property, which you may not necessarily. And want it to do. can be kind that, of a bitch when you have like the three menus open deep. Yeah, yep. yeah, and you're and you're like trying you're dodging things and you're trying to hack things while you're in the middle of a fight. But that's not really an issue with the game. That's more of an issue with the construction of the Xbox controller. So I'm going to give it four cheers. Yeah. For me, I didn't even need to use the Xbox DRV thing to emulate the Xbox 360 controller because it's double fine. They know their controllers. They know their target audience. They made a shit ton of money when they released Psychonauts for the PS2. And my PS2 DualShock worked out of the box everything was mapped once again pressing the select button there opens the inventory so yeah four chairs for me (laughs) all right so that's three chairs for controls and our final subject of category foon then did you have fun foon here we go it's something we're really gonna look at um i genuinely appreciate the way this game starts out and treats you like an adult. There's no, oh, look, you have a Steam achievement for starting the game. (laughs) It really is the figure-it-out-yourself fuckers approach, which I think might hurt it in this day and age, because everyone's like, oh, I need 15 pop-ups I need a tutorial! Where's auto-aim? Um, you never really need that in this game. That said, I I was about 1.5 ons in you know, I found myself just bored. I, I didn't start this game with any prejudice whatsoever. It's like, um, maybe not my thing. Maybe it's my thing. I don't know. I need to put some time into it. And I did. Uh, for me, after, you know, almost coming up, you know, it was, uh, like one hour, 70 minutes into it. So I guess two hours. It was debugging the game. And I, I used to get paid to do that. <laughs> that that's not, not something... I was, that's what I felt like I was doing. I was like, oh, if I fix this and change this, I can do this. I didn't get my reward mechanic from that. That leads me to this last point. I don't understand who the target audience is for this. Is it kids, developers, complete nutters, Pedro? <laughs> I it, <laughs> can't tell you that. It's simply just not my bag. It's hack and slash, but it, it, there's no hacking. In the physical sense, you don't get to go destroy things. You plug into them and change the variables and nope them and make them drop some hearts. Um, interesting things with time mechanics, uh, the hat with all that, and reprogramming, and you can actually fuck the game up by doing that. It's brilliant. <laughs> That's why I'm not going to give it one chair. But for me, for fun, I, uh, I didn't hate it. I, I just felt like I, I was being tested. So I, I'm going to give it two chairs. You know what? I, I I think the game has a very cool concept. It's a, it's very it's a unique take on the the adventure game. I I like it. Um, the puzzles do have a tendency to make themselves imme- either immediately apparent or makes you think I fucking missed something four or five screens back, and now I'm going to have to backtrack to figure out what the hell it was. Which can be cumbersome, especially when you have to reverse navigate through various puzzles and whatnot. Um, but I really do like the hackability aspect. Like Ben said, I was I was actually surprised when I was screwing around with the properties of an enemy and then it crashed the game. I'm like, 
Oh, well, apparently I got to watch out for that now. That's good to know. Um, I also like the fact that the game is basically a series of Lewis scripts that you can actually change outside of the game. If I were so inclined, yep. I could start fucking around with game properties and that's completely whatnot. moddable. And, yeah, it's yep. complete. It's completely moddable. They, it's nice that they expect you to do that. And like Vince said, I like I like the whole OG Legend of Zelda vibe where it sort of just drops you into it and says, "Here's your fucking thing. Have that. You 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 figure the rest out." It it, it yeah. So I, I I I like this game. I like the hackability aspect. I like the concept. I think all in all, it's not a perfect game, but it's pretty fun. I would give it three chairs. Hmm. Well, like you guys said, uh, the puzzle the puzzles aren't exactly hard. You made, you, you made that noise again. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't tell you a damn thing about them, and there are some puzzles which, in the latter parts of the game, like Act Three, Act Four, <laughs> they're a yeah. bit of a chore. Uh, they're not exactly puzzles, they're chores because you know exactly what you need to do you just have to do it right you have to get the timing just perfectly and that is especially relevant at the end of Act 2 with the Warden boss now, I do like that they have multiple ways of having you defeat bosses that's a very good thing more people need to do that with their games because a boss is supposed to be the culmination of a certain area you're supposed to apply everything that you've learned so far in order to beat it it's not just an enemy that has you know more hp it's bigger it's meaner it's nastier it's not it's a test and the warden I had to actually use the magic lamp in order to change my name so it wouldn't recognize me and let me walk out of the prison. <laughs> now, there is one other way you can beat it, which is to use the boomerang, then turn around, hack yourself to become super fast, and there you go. So you're basically cheating at that point. I like that, but the chores that are some of the puzzles in this game are just too much for me to actually grant this the three chairs so for me it gets two all right so we tally that up and that's two chairs for fun and we tally the whole thing up stick it in the blender and pour it out we have some chair margaritas it's about three chairs worth of margaritas finally so gentlemen Final thoughts on Hack and Slash. Well, Brad, that's definitely a check it out. I mean, if you've listened to what came out of our voice organs, if you, if you like that type of thing, um, it took me a while. It was very, uh, the first 15 minutes of just like walking around going, what the hell do I do? I remember when Humble first sent this to us. I mean, it was a long time ago. We were talking like four or five months ago. You, you, you mean Double Fun? Yeah. Who yes. <laughs> Those humble. people. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> Call me. Um, I saw that mechanic of like changing values, and I was like, oh, "Please don't let that be a game mechanic." And they're like, "Fuck you, man! It is. That's the only <laughs> game mechanic. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it is the only one." <laughs> and I mean, seriously, uh, ten minutes is like, okay, bush, um, die, catch on fire, which I like. Draw pots. Once you start understanding that, and you run into your first bird thing, and you're like, oh, I'm going to fight you. No, I'm not. I'm dead. Um, I, I didn't hate it. It's just seriously not my thing. It's like it wants to be a 2D educational Minecraft without the multiplayer or the fun. It almost seems needlessly complex, but that could be needlessly fun. It depends on what you're looking for in a game. Didn't hate it, but, you know, I, I'm not going to date its sister. J-Man. <laughs> uh, it's a very unique take on the adventure game, like I said before. I, I, I like it just because it's trying something new, and it forces you to think laterally, and it forces you to consider all your options. Yeah. Um, I, I had fun playing this game. I would recommend it. Uh, well, 15 bucks is a bit steep, um, but I, I, I would say now that it's on sale for 13 uh, if you're if if you want to try something different, Pick it up for sure. Um, 
you might like it, you might hate it, but you'll you won't feel like you wasted the money because it, it's certainly something different than what you're used to playing. Yeah, it is. Well, if you like Metroidvania, Zelda, those kinds of games, you're gonna love this one. I'm not kidding. This is basically Zelda with variables. You set variables, you change scripts, you change the way things behave, and lo and behold, you beat the game. Now, for me, it's not particularly fun because, like I said, the puzzles were more of a chore than an exercise in, you know, trying to figure out what the puzzle itself needs. Because the moment I look at it, I see, oh, I can solve it like this, but it's going to be fucked on the work, so I don't want to do it. But that's just me. Maybe you like that thing. Maybe you're one of those people that likes repetitive tasks. So, yeah, if you are, give this one a bash. Me, personally, I'm sorry, Tim, but uh, I'm looking forward to part two of Broken Age. Well, at least we can all agree that this game is infinitely better than Retro Booster.